Chapter 1. Delaying immediate gratification for the sake of future consequences is an acquired cognitive skill. Self-control is visible and measurable early in life and has profound long-term consequences for people's welfare, mental, and physical health over their lifespan. It is a skill that we can modify and enhance through specific cognitive strategies that have now been identified. The marshmallow test and the experiments that have followed over the last 50 years have helped stimulate a remarkable wave of research on self-control, with a five-fold increase in the number of scientific publications just within the first decade of this century. This summary explains the research and how it reveals the mechanisms that enable self-control. It also shows how we can harness these mechanisms constructively in everyday life. The marshmallow test's results identified the mental processes and strategies through which we can cool hot temptations, delay gratification, and achieve self-control. You'll also discover why a preschooler's ability to wait for more treats, rather than ring the bell and settle for less, predicts so much about future success and well-being. While not guaranteeing success and a rosy future, self-control ability greatly improves the chances, helping us make the tough choices and sustain the effort needed to reach our goals. Walter Miskell Can there be excessive self-control? If yes, how do we deal with it? How does the marshmallow test affect public policies? Findings about self-control, genetics, and brain plasticity change the conception of human nature and the understanding of who we are and what we can be. What is the marshmallow test? What is the latest development in the work? How can the findings from the test help those who have struggled with self-control? What are the links between the marshmallow test and child rearing, hiring new staff, avoiding unwise business decisions, breaking free from addiction, controlling weight, reforming education, and understanding our own vulnerabilities and strengths? These questions and more are answered in this summary. Enjoy the reading. Chapter 2 The marshmallow test is a test of willpower given to preschoolers in the early 1960s and has yielded phenomenal results. Originally dubbed the preschool self-imposed delay of immediate gratification for the sake of delayed but more valued rewards paradigm, the method that came to be known as the marshmallow test was designed to understand how children control their urges. Preschoolers at Stanford University's Bing Nursery School were subjected to a simple study that challenged them with a tough dilemma. They were to choose between one reward that they could have immediately and a larger reward for which they would have to wait, alone, for up to 20 minutes. The children could choose from an assortment of rewards that included marshmallows, cookies, little pretzels, mints, and so on. They were to ring a desk bell at any time to call back the researcher and eat the one marshmallow for those who chose marshmallows. The struggles observed as these children tried to restrain themselves from ringing the bell sparked a wide range of emotions in the researchers. They saw the potential for even children to resist temptation and persevere for their delayed rewards. What the preschoolers did as they tried to keep waiting and how they did or didn't manage the delay gratification unexpectedly turned out to predict much about their future lives. Learning to exercise self-control early in life can produce phenomenal results in later life. Chapter 3 Self-control is crucial for the successful pursuit of long-term goals. Everybody is eager to know how willpower works, and everybody would like to have more of it, and with less effort, for themselves, their children, and their relatives puffing on cigarettes. The ability to delay gratification and resist temptations has been a fundamental challenge since the dawn of civilization. It is central to the Genesis story of Adam and Eve's temptation in the Garden of Eden, and a subject of the ancient Greek philosophers who named the weakness of the will, akrasia. Over the millennia, willpower was considered an immutable trait. You either had it or you didn't making those low in willpower victims of their biological and social histories and the forces of the monetary situation. Self-control is essential for developing the self-restraint and empathy needed to build caring and mutual supportive relationships. It can help people avoid becoming entrapped early in life, dropping out of school, becoming impervious to consequences, or getting stuck in jobs they hate. It is the master aptitude underlying emotional intelligence, essential for constructing a fulfilling life. And yet, despite its evident importance, it was excluded from serious scientific study until Miskell and his students demystified the concept, created a method to study it, showed its critical role for adaptive functioning, and parsed the psychological processes that enable it. The marshmallow test has attracted the attention of the world since the turn of the century. Television programs, newspaper editorials, magazines throughout the world have talked about its implications. It is even guiding the efforts of Sesame Street's Cookie Monster to master his impulse to voraciously devour cookies so that he may join the Cookie Connoisseurs Club. The marshmallow research is influencing curriculum in many schools that teach a wide range of children, from those living in poverty to those attending elite private academies. International investment companies use it to encourage retirement planning. As the public interest in the topic of willpower increases, so does the amount and depth of scientific information on how delay of gratification and self-control are enabled, both psychologically and biologically. Did you know, David Brooks, a columnist at the New York Times, under the title Marshmallows and Public Policy, dubbed the method the marshmallow test. Chapter 4 as we grow up, the part of our brain that regulates our self-control develops based on the interaction between the hot and cool systems in our body. The decision to give in or resist temptation depends on the functioning of two systems in our body. The first is our instant reaction to our environment, and the second is our control of our behavior. These two systems are called the limbic system and the prefrontal cortex. The limbic system is also known as the hot system. It reacts to external stimuli, 
When a child sees something attractive, he wants to have it immediately instead of waiting patiently for more. Activation of the hot system triggers instantaneous action. Hunger for food and desire for other alluring stimuli elicit rapid hot behaviors. Threats and danger signals elicit fear and automatic defensive and flight reactions. The hot system is somewhat similar to what Freud called the ID. He saw this as the unconscious structure of the mind, which contains sexual and aggressive biological impulses to seek immediate gratification and tension reduction, impervious to the consequences. The other system is the cool system, located in our prefrontal cortex. The prefrontal cortex is the most evolved region of the brain. It, en it enables and supports the highest order cognitive abilities that make us distinctly human. It regulates our thoughts, actions, and emotions, is the source of creativity and imagination, and is crucial for inhibiting inappropriate actions that interfere with the pursuit of goals. It allows us to redirect our attention and to change strategies flexibly as the requirements of the situation shift. It is the part of our brain that is responsible for self-control. The cool system, or prefrontal cortex, is essential for making decisions and planning ahead. We activate the cool system anytime we need to control ourselves. Chapter 5. The hot and cool systems work in such a way that when one is active, the other becomes less active. Our hot system starts functioning from the day we are born. The cool system develops throughout childhood. The difficulty children have in resisting marshmallow comes from their tendency to use the hot system rather than the cool system. In fact, children less than four years old are not able to use their cool system. When faced with the temptations, they ring the bell or start nibbling on the treats within about 30 seconds. Their cool system is not yet sufficiently developed. In contrast, by age 12, almost 60% of children in some studies have been able to wait even as long as 25 minutes, a very long time to be sitting facing a few cookies and a bell in a barren little room. Girls display higher capacity for delayed gratification than boys when they are given equal reward values and motivation. Also, what is desirable to each gender differs and varies with time. Additionally, boys and girls have different strategies for engaging their cooling system. The older we get, the more self-control we gain. Our cool system continues to grow into adolescence. For some people, their cool systems are unable to function fully until they are adults. This lag in development of the cool system explains why some teens cannot resist alcohol or drug addiction. Chapter 6 our environment shapes our self-control abilities, while the context determines how much self-control we have. Self-control is a skill that is partly genetic and partly dependent on the environment we find ourselves. Our life experiences are constantly shaping who we are as we exercise our ability to improve our self-control. In one study published in the 1958 Canadian Journal of Psychology, researchers used rats that had been selectively bred to be either maize dull or maize bright. Over multiple generations, this selective breeding produced rats that were primed to be bright or dull when it came to running mazes. The scientists placed these young animals either in a very lively rat world filled with many sensory stimuli or in an impoverished, barren rat world that had essentially no sensory stimuli. The dull rats put into the enriched environments became significantly brighter, and the bright ones stuck in the impoverished life space got duller, showing a significant decline in their performance. The environment dramatically changed the expression of a cognitive ability that was generated through selective breeding to create rats as genetically bright or dull as their genes could possibly make them. This study was one of the first to demonstrate that what genes do depends on the environment in which they are functioning. Chapter 7. Parenting plays a major role in the development of self-control. During the first few years of life, our prefrontal cortex develops most rapidly. The environment a child grows in is therefore highly important in shaping a child's self-control. By distracting children from unpleasant situations, parents can teach their children self-control. When a mother calms a crying child by introducing a distraction, such as a toy, the child learns to use this method to distract himself when in a similar situation at a future time. Children who are not introduced to such distraction strategies usually have difficulty coming up with their own self-control techniques later in life. The environment plays a more significant role in determining the control we have over our desires than our genes. Compelling examples of human gene and environment interplay come from a study in New Zealand of more than 1,000 children followed from birth in 1972 for more than 30 years. Researchers tested to see if the number of stressful life events experienced over a 20-year period influenced the long-term risk of depression. Concurrently, they assessed participants for variation in a gene that alters the level of serotonin in the brain. Again, it was the interplay of genetics and environment that mattered and determined whether or not the genetic potential for risk or resilience was activated. Depression emerged more often in people who had the genetic vulnerability if they were also exposed to more stressful life experiences. Chapter 8. Another variable to consider in the expression of self-control is context. A person may lack self-control in an area of their life but display exceptional ability to control themselves in other areas. Western conceptions of traits in human nature have long assumed that self-control and the ability to delay gratification characterize individuals consistently and will be reflected in their behavior across many different situations and contexts. Walter Miskell This is why much shock and surprise are expressed in the media each time the world learns about another famous leader, celebrity, or pillar of society whose hidden life has been exposed, revealing what appears to be a massive failure of judgment and self-control. In truth, we choose the situations in which we exercise our self-control. 
When deciding whether or not to give in to temptation, we usually consider the consequences and the strength of the temptation. A person who is exceptional at expressing self-control in work-related matters may be poor at sticking to their weight loss regimen. The reason is because they do not see much value in keeping fit, whereas excellence at work is something important to them. Your ability to control yourself improves when you think of self-control as limitless. At Stanford University, Carol Dweck, a psychology professor, and her colleagues found that those who were convinced that a mental exercise fueled their stamina displayed better self-control than those who felt they needed to regain stamina after a tough mental exertion. By tracking college students before, during, and after their exam, Dweck's team discovered the following. Students who believed in unlimited willpower did better under high-stress exam conditions than those who thought they needed to refuel. The latter group were caught eating unhealthy foods and procrastinating. Our thoughts about our capacities determine how well we perform. Our body will respond to the beliefs we hold in our minds. Chapter 9. Children who did better in the marshmallow test went on to achieve more success through self-control strategies as adults. Follow-up studies were conducted on the children who participated in the marshmallow test when they were older. The researchers found that children who waited longer for their marshmallows were more successful later in life. This outcome shows that the marshmallow test is an indicator of the trajectory a child would follow in life if they're not helped to develop willpower from their preschool days. The researchers found that children who were able to wait for the bigger reward, or who waited for a longer time before giving in to the temptation, were better at concentrating as adults in distracting environments, and they were also better at planning ahead. Their test scores were also higher. On their SATs, scholastic assessment tests, children who waited for their treats had higher scores. Their ability to maintain personal relationships were also better than those who sought immediate gratification. When their brains were examined with an fMRI scanner, the researchers found that those who excelled in the marshmallow test had much more activation in their prefrontal cortex, the home of the cool system. Those who gave in to the temptation had more activation in their ventral striatum, the part of the brain linked with pleasure and addiction. These adults were more susceptible to addictive substances. These results revealed that self-control habits that had been formed from childhood stays with us as we grow older. Children should be taught that they are capable of making their own decisions and that those decisions have consequences. Chapter 10. Parents and parents need to support their children but also give them a sense of autonomy. Help them understand that their choices have consequences that correlate with their actions. A good way to inculcate this trait is to use the if-then plan. For example, a parent can show a child that if he practices regularly, then he will be able to demonstrate mastery of a skill. Preschool is the time when children are most ready to learn strategies that can help them cope with stress and develop cognitive skills essential for school success. Walter Miskell in his 2013 State of the Union address, President Obama called for making preschool education universally available in the United States. Translating this request to reality will be highly beneficial if schools and families collaborate to help children continue to use and further develop skills to generate the conscientious behaviors, self-control, responsibility, and life goals that society values. Preschool will help young children develop the character skills and motivation they need to have the chances they deserve. Learn to praise children when they work hard. They will be inspired to keep working hard in the future. Reward them for making an effort, even if they are unable to achieve the desired outcome. Help them to understand that mistakes are part of the process, and they shouldn't panic when mistakes happen. Self-control is mostly needed in stressful situations, but most children seem to give up in the face of stress. Parents need to encourage them by explaining that their abilities are not limited to their genes. Knowing that they have an unlimited source of willpower will energize them to do their best in stressful circumstances. Chapter 11 Physical distancing and psychological distancing are effective cooling strategies for our hot systems. Resisting temptation is difficult because the hot system is heavily biased toward the present. It takes full account of immediate rewards, but discounts rewards that are delayed. Psychologists have demonstrated this future discounting in both humans and animals, and economists have formalized it in a simple mathematical model. The model involves assigning a number to the immediate and future rewards. Future rewards are discounted by a factor which varies from one person to another, depending on the values of the person making the decision. For example, David Labson, a Harvard University economics professor, explains why he rarely goes to the gym using this model. Labson uses a future discount rate of half. Thus, he assigned the effort of exercising today the value of negative 6 and assigned the long-term health gains from exercising a value of plus 8. With a discount rate of half, the net benefit of exercising today for someone with his present bias is negative 6 plus half times positive 8 equals negative 2. In contrast, exercising tomorrow has a delayed effort of negative 6 and a delayed benefit of plus 8 both of which are halved because they are in the future. Thus, negative 6 plus 8 times half has a negative benefit of plus 1. Since this value is better than negative 2, the net benefit of exercising today, he continues to procrastinate going to the gym. The successful preschoolers cooled their immediate temptation by physically distancing themselves from it. They pushed it to the other edge of the table, turned around in their chairs to face the other direction, and invented imaginative ways to purposefully distract themselves. You can improve your self-control by putting a physical distance between you and what is tempting you. Think about the issue in a more abstract and detached way so you can activate your cool system. The if-then plan can improve self-control. 
For instance, you can set a rule that if your alarm goes off in the morning, then you will go for a cup of coffee. After a while, the behavior will become automatic and you won't need those rules anymore. Conclusion From childhood, we develop our self-control skills. As we grow older, the type of environment in which we live determines how much self-control we have. Children who grow up in less fortunate environments usually have more difficulty controlling themselves. By focusing on the future and strategically using distractions, anyone can improve their willpower. When you are tempted, put psychological and physical distance between you and your temptation. We can automate our responses using the if-then strategy. It helps you anticipate a bad behavior and create an escape hatch by pre-planning a desired behavior that will replace the former behavior. The best self-control plans, notwithstanding anger, anxiety, rejection pain, and other negative emotions, are inevitable parts of life. Healing requires a shift in focus, from your self-absorbed view of the situation to a more objective stance. You look again at the painful experience, not through your own eyes, but as if you were observing from a distance. When you detach yourself from the event, you regain control that allows you to heal and move on with your life. By and large, we must all learn that a life lived with too much delay of gratification can be as sad as one without enough of it. Therefore, we must strive to know when to eat our marshmallows and when to wait for more marshmallows. This knowledge is possible only if we develop the ability to wait. Try this. A simple mathematical model that involves assigning a number between 0 and 9 to the effort or pain required to do something now and the long-term benefit of the activity we discussed in this summary. Identify an activity you often procrastinate. Apply this model to discover the net benefit that reveals why you procrastinate. Then try to reverse the process and get yourself a net benefit that enables you to do the activity without procrastination.